Hey, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to the Therapy Matters podcast, your one-stop resource for expert insights and advice on everything therapy and rehab. I'm your host, Scott Rongo, and today we have a very special guest in Justin Moore, the CEO of American Physical Therapy Association, also known as APTA. Justin, thanks for uh, joining us today. Thank you, Scott. Privilege to be with you, and I look forward to our conversation this morning, this afternoon, or this evening. (laughs) <laughs> Absolutely. So, Justin, you're you're not new to the space or the industry. Um, perhaps let's get started with maybe just giving a little bit of um, guidance and, and background uh, on yourself for for our audience. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks. Um, as uh, you said, I'm Justin Moore. I'm the CEO of the American Physical Therapy Association, but I'm a physical therapist by background and have been at APTA for the last 24 years. So very early on in my career, I got the opportunity to come to APTA to work on public policy issues, and specifically the physical therapist profession's um, efforts to protect manipulation as a part of our scope of practice. So that's what brought me to APTA. I've spent my career here and presently have been the CEO for the last seven years. You have a bit of a unique lens, right? You're, you practice, but then you have also have the, the lens of being able to see you know, across the country, what's happening in the space uh, and interact with, with, you know, PTs, you know, again, across the country, be curious, what, what are the three key things that, you know, come across your desk that you're hearing in the space that we need to make sure we, we are mindful of as we move forward? Yeah, it's, it's definitely a unique vantage point from where I sit in the three things that I think that we see that are really the challenges or opportunities for this profession are first and foremost payment. Uh, We have been in a static payment environment for a number of years. And so how do we really reflect the value that physical therapists provide and be paid fairly and appropriately? And so with payment being static, we definitely need to find efforts to get increased value, increased payment uh, for our providers, uh, for our practices. That's also combined with increasing administrative burdens. And so the cost of delivering care has gone up uh, at a faster rate than our payment rates have. So how do we also attack that side of the equation and really start to look at how do we lower overall costs of care delivery um, as well? So it's a two, two-prong two attack on the payment front. How do we raise revenue, lower expenses, so that we have a vibrant business community, a vibrant practice community to support the impact physical co- therapists can make? So that's the first. That's always priority one. The other two issues are workforce. Uh, that does have some relationship to the cost of care, but we are in a little bit of post-pandemic labor crisis. And we've seen a high number of individuals leave the profession. We've seen a reduction in hours. um, And we've seen it really challenges practices to having the the workforce they need to serve the demand our profession is driving. And so it's a great victory for the profession. We're seeing more people seek our care. Now we need to have an adequate workforce to be able to uh, meet those patient needs, whether it's long COVID, pain medication, uh, you know, uh, an alternative to pain medications, how do we really have a robust and prosperous workforce? And then the third, which is sort of a, a new area, is the emergence of technology in the profession. So how are, how are our practitioners really using what's becoming more portable, more mobile, more accessible technology? And that's uh, seen through remote therapeutic monitoring. That's seen through the digital platforms that are coming on the market. That's seen uh, the use of uh, electronic health records that can provide insights and data uh, on practice parameters. There's just a lot converging on the technology side of how does that really help our practitioners, everything from practice management and be more efficient on that cost side to how do they get insights to help improve and do continuous quality improvement practices? So those are the three things that we see from all vantage points, whether we're talking to industry, practice owners, individual clinicians, students, uh, they always come together for those three sort of key themes of payment, workforce, and innovation. Yeah. And and to your point about one and two, my my suspicion is even on the third one, you can kind of, they, they all are intertwined, right? Um, on how they work together and how uh, the, the providers kind of, um, uh, are, are impacted by the technology, by cost, by reimbursement, 
and the workforce certainly um, is, is again, impacted across the board, whether it's a PT or, or front office staff or back office staff. So, yeah, absolutely. My, you know, my, my sense is we could probably go, you know, a good few hours on each of these topics, um, which we clearly won't have time for today, but hopefully we'll be able to have some follow up, maybe conversations with, with folks around these. But let's start with, you know, rising costs and, you know, reimbursements down, you know, f- from your vantage point, you know, how can organizations best manage this? I mean, this, it's a challenging thing across the board, right? Regardless of the size of your practice, but what kind of, what kind of uh, guidance would you give to, to organizations out there to help manage this and control this? Um, probably my f- two biggest pieces of advice are diversification. One of the great things that it is, you know, happened in this profession is that we are recognized by insurance companies, whether that's Medicare on the federal level or most of the commercial payers or even state-based plans. So physical therapy has really achieved a lot by being recognized by those payers, but it's also created a little bit of dependency on that model. So diversification of resource, of revenue sources is critical for practices and clinicians uh, from that standpoint. And the data we know that is we are really insurance dependent and insurance um, directed. And that has been uh, you know, good for the profession at a macro level, but is also some of the pressures we're feeling with lowering rates, increasing administrative burdens. So we really look for practitioners to look to go direct to consumer, look to diversify, add new services, add new product lines. Um, you know, they, we need to have a more diverse set of offerings to help drive revenues into our practice. So that's the first thing that I really, really stands out to me uh, for adv- advice. And then we have to empower consumers. Um, you know, one of the things, those consumers are the, you know, uh, people who are, you know, working with their employer and purchasing that insurers. So we have to be able to talk directly to consumers and really help them be our advocate on getting, uh, is getting their insurance to cover physical therapy and to cover it adequately. Uh, so on the practice side, I always argue for you know greater diversification, seeking new new um, revenue sources, but also then empowering who is your best PR, your patients. Uh, we know that from consumer data that the patients who receive good quality care become our best ambassadors and our best advocates. So how do we make sure that they're talking to their insurance company because they're going to have as much impact as all of us are, and we're going to continue to mm-hmm. do it from an association standpoint. But that uh, surround sound is what's going to get their attention. Consumer-driven healthcare, right? I mean, I can tell you as a as a PT patient and as having uh, a child that has needed PT, uh, I think that is so critical in being able to know uh, and be able to have access um, to be able to get the care that that uh, is needed for sure. Um, so now, if if you put your uh, APTA hat on, right? Are there things that uh, the organization are doing to help try to drive uh, reimbursements on behalf of, of the industry? Yeah, a couple of things is probably what we do the most of is advocacy. And that's both at the federal and in collaboration with our state chapters at the state level. So the issues were pri- uh, that are sort of top of the agenda this year are increasing Medicare payment rates. We are in a uh, death spiral of the Medicare physician fee schedule. Every year that comes out about July 1st, it, uh, because of a payment policy that incentivizes primary care, we get a cut. And so each year we fight that cut um, and, and try to address so that we can keep payment at least adequate. And so that's our first priority is making sure that Medicare physician fee schedule cut is not fully implemented. So we want to delay it, de- de- uh, diminish it. And that's an annual process. And so a lot of our advocates that listen to these podcasts will know that that's, they, they really are the, the ground troop of making sure that Congress hears that we need to address that because those cuts are unsustainable. At the same time, we're trying to pass legislation that would take that policy off the books and replace it with an annual Medicare uh, economic uh, inflationary index so that we're not fighting this diminishing the cuts uh, we're fighting, you know, we get a stable payment environment so we can seek long-term reforms. So that's really, and the reason Medicare is so important is because a lot of private pays and commercial pays use that as their benchmark or their reference point. So if you see a cut in Medicare downstream 
the Aetna's, Blue Cross's, uh, all the other payers sort of follow that o- over a course of time. And so it doesn't affect uh, the wide swath of patients that physical therapists serve, but it does set, set a standard uh, or a benchmark uh, on which payment is referenced or uh, compared to. So that's our first. We're also attacking the administrating burden side uh, that you saw on the front end, and prior authorization is the big one. Uh, our data at APTA shows that prior authorization is adding anywhere from eight to 10 minutes per patient visit. As we know in physical therapy, uh, as with our payment system is time-based, that is non-billable time. And so that's a, that's a somebody could be getting Therax, somebody could be getting gate training when somebody is actually in the back office filling out paperwork. So if we so prior authorization is the the administrative burden we're most focused on right now, and um, we're doing that uh, both at the federal level, working at Medicare Advantage plans, but also having great success at the state of working directly with local payers and uh, getting state legislators involved in this issue as well. And it, you know, attacking prior authorization is going to be our focus when we go out to state legislative conferences this summer. So we'll be running ads. Uh, education seminars to really how can policymakers help us address this hidden cost in healthcare? It's really just driving up costs for the patient without any care being delivered. So, eight, eight minutes a patient is going to add up very, very quickly. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Right, very, very quickly. Uh, that that that's good stuff. So so let's maybe shift our our conversation to the workforce uh, mm-hmm. workforce shortage. Um, is this driven by the COVID pandemic? Where, where do you think? Uh, what do you think the root cause of this is? Is it people are looking at it saying, "Hey, you know, the there are income potentials uh, or challenges rather downstream." What, what What do you think the the cause is? Yeah, it's all the above. Um, mm-hmm. So workforce is um, as close to payment as a major challenge that we've seen, and I, I personally think we're sort of in a labor crisis. And the reason is uh, the pandemic did have an impact. During the pandemic, we did see uh, PTs furloughed, laid off, um, and did they return to work uh, as the pandemic recovered? Um, We're still gathering data on that, but there is an indication that we did lose a portion of our workforce over the 40 months of the public health emergency, which ironically ends today. Um, So, you know, the public (laughs) health emergency ends today, and we've been in that for 40 months and uh, but uh, we did see an impact, uh, whether it was lost revenue, lost hours. We also see an increasing trend of individuals seeking less uh, full time employment. And so part time employment's becoming uh, a new trend in the workforce. Uh, so working 30 hours versus the full 40 hours, which obviously has a macro impact on the total available clinical workforce. And so that's going on. Um, in, in, in that dynamic. So that r- leaving the workforce, big issue through the pandemic, uh, different practice patterns from our clinicians of part-time or wanting to do gig economy in addition to a full-time employer, uh, all those are having you know an impact of a very, uh, very dynamic workforce and a very mobile workforce. We also have some good news stories on the, on the workforce side. And partially those two good news stories is, the demand for services is is increasing. And so practices are seeing more people seek their care. We're seeing more career opportunities for physical therapists, both good news stories, but when you start to pull PTs out of the clinical workforce, that is a challenge uh, to, you know, the available, uh, the available portion of the workforce to see patients. So we're seeing growing number of clinicians choose non-clinical practice environments. I'm an example of one. We have PTs that are CEOs of major hospitals. We have new competition in the market uh, for positions. The digital platforms that we talked about in innovation are employing physical therapists. And so those are pulling you know, more competition in the available jobs uh, for physical therapists, which at a macro 30,000 feet level is very exciting for the profession. But at a daily level, it is challenging the available workforce Uh, on-site, in clinics, in practices, providing patient care. The last thing I'll say on the workforce is, you know, PT should be proud of how they've invested and sustained uh, a viable pipeline. Our profession has grown very rapidly. We're now the fifth largest uh, profession in healthcare. We're producing 
We've doubled our workforce in you know just over a decade. So we're now graduating about 12,500 new physical therapists annually. Uh, May is a big month. Uh, about 60% of all those graduates graduate this month. will start to take their NPTE and be available to the workforce August and December, the next two cycles that we see on that workforce. And so we should be proud of that pipeline and that production. We now need to also match that with how do we retain our workforce and how do we create healthy practice environments where people see a career in physical therapy and, and we really support our clinic clinical workforce at a high level. And, and we're seeing that across healthcare. How do we you know prevent burnout? How do we build resiliency? How do we creep a, keep a fit and well uh, practice community so that we can meet that ultimate mission of serving patients and improving the health of society? Yeah, no, that that that's great. And uh, this uh, this recording is taking place on May 11th. So to your point about the the pandemic, you know, quote unquote, ending today um, is in reference to that. And I'd also say congratulations to all those graduates that are going to be happening over the next couple of weeks. Um, so that that's that's great news. You know, the, the third thing that you mentioned is technology. And, and you you know, you referenced um, a lot of different things, right? There's EMR PM software, there's there's um, remote therapy monitoring that obviously is, is taking hold and changing the landscape. I'd be curious as to one uh, bit of technology, though, that uh, I don't know if, if you and, and the APTA has given much thought to it, but there's a lot of talk around AI, and not just in the PT space, but just, you know, across the board, right? You can't turn on um, a news channel and not have some kind of story around how AI is uh, is penetrating and impacting all sorts of industries. Just kind of curious as to, you know, what you're hearing out there, if there's, if there's technologies in the... Um, and on the horizon with AI in particular that you think are going to start having an impact or, or not just technologies, but how AI might have an impact on the space uh, in general? Yeah, it's a great question because I, I think I've heard more about AI in the last two weeks. I mean, I knew it was out there, but it is it has gone from being a curiosity to an all-consuming thought. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and we look at it at APTA at two levels. And the first, and, and I'll spend very little time on this, but the first is, how does it affect our role as an association supporting individual members who are, are seeking our knowledge, our, our, um, our resources? And we know we're going to have major business disruption due to AI. And so a great example of that is we're in the certification business. We're, you know, especially certification. And what are the ways to maintain the integrity of that process uh, when AI you know, is starting to be very, <clears throat> very proficient at, you know, helping people with applications and scientific publications. You know, how does AI challenge the journal world where people can ask, you know, chat GPT, what's the latest ways to treat low back pain and get results versus doing the evidence-based research? So we're looking at it from that standpoint already from a APTA as an association supporting the individual physical therapist. But I think more important, and your point is, it's going to disrupt practice. And I think it's probably going to be on two levels is how does AI get deployed on the practice management standpoints? So can it add efficiencies to practice? Um, can it provide predictive analytics and they help you understand, you know, trends, patterns at a higher level? And will it reduce some of the administrative burdens we see? So there could be some pluses on that. And so we need to, we're digging into that and what's the role of AI as it matures to really helping us be doing what we all <clears throat> doing what we all sought to do was to spend time with patients. So the other thing it's gonna you know on that side is how's it gonna be uh, utilized by consumers? How are, how are they gonna use uh, to you know seek our care or to you know augment our care? And then how's it gonna uh, assist in practice delivery? And you know all those things really uh, you know come together uh, to really challenge us. Um, as a profession to see how are we going to set the right ground rules, guardrails around the use of AI in PT practice. And I think AI is sort of where telehealth was 25 years ago when we were sitting there saying, oh, there's this new way of you know, providing patient care over telecommunications. How, what are the parameters? What are the guidelines? And it took you know, 25 years for telehealth 
to sort of mature, and it matured in about three days once everybody had to do it. And I think in AI, it's going to happen faster. I think we're going to have to be yeah. you know, quicker to the guardrails, quicker to the adoption and adherence, uh, because we're not going to have 25 years like we did with telehealth. We're going to have 25 months, maybe. And so I think we have to be, and our board's having a lot of conversations about this, of really what do we need to do with the PT community at a little, at the base level of education and literacy? What is AI? What are the different things that are going on in the profession in AI? to best practice. And that's the spectrum that we would look at it from, is everything from basic literacy on AI to best practice on use of AI and patient care and practice management and association business. Yeah, I, and I agree. There's no way there's 25 years and I think 25 months is is questionable too at this point, right? It, exactly. it is coming and coming quickly um, across the board. So yeah, there was just an article in... Uh, I think it was British, uh, the British Medical Journal uh, about the use of AI in healthcare, and so you're already starting to see scholarly publications, which are not mm. known as the most efficient processes, um, talk about AI. And so, if they're already embracing it and talking about it, the mm. practice community has got to be adopting it at, at a, and understanding it at a very high level. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally agree on that. So Justin, I, I think we're about out of time, but I would love for you to maybe just um, talk to the audience for those listening that are either currently involved with APTA, um, maybe you know how they can be more involved. And for somebody that's listening, maybe that's not involved with APTA that would like to get involved, uh, how, can they, how can they get involved with the organization? Well, first and foremost, APTA is the sum of its members, and it is a member-driven organization. So getting involved, being engaged in your professional association is, is you know, not a sort of a transaction. It is a commitment to, to advancing your profession. So I'd highly encourage uh, all PTs out there to be part of this community, part of this organization, because not only do we need you uh, for our voice, for our impact, uh, we do need uh, a collective, you know, organization advancing this profession, addressing issues like what are the parameters of AI? What are the new payment models? And, um, you know, we're the implementers here on the staff side, and um, we need the ideas and the innovation coming from the profession. So we highly encourage uh, anyone that's listening to this podcast, if, if you're a member, first of all, thank you, because uh, you are what make us go. And then if you're not a member, I'd consider joining this community because, you know, people who are involved will tell you, you get more out of it the more you put in it. And so we always hear, oh, it's expensive or I don't see value. Um, help us create that value. And um, I guarantee you, if you get involved, you start participating, attending conferences, you will get more value out of it than you'll ever experience, whether that's networking, connecting to other people that are going to help you be your best self. Uh, but that's sort of what associations are. It's bringing the community together, you know, centralizing those resources to do advocacy, PR, and those different activities to advance the profession. And our goal at the end of the day is that every physical therapist can practice at the top of their license and has the economic opportunities to practice where, when, and how they want. Uh, and that's, that's what we're all about. And so be part of this community. Yeah. What's the old saying? You get out what you put in, right? Um, yeah, absolutely. So, we yeah. always, uh, I always laugh when we have our top awards of the, you know, big, the physical therapists that have, you know, lifetime achievement awards, essentially, whether that's fellowships or the McMillan lecture, they almost all say, I got way more out of it than I ever put into it. And these are the top of the top. And so, you know, they, you know, it's sort of the Sammy Sosa line, you know, physical therapy has been very, very good to me. Uh, so that's what you hear from that standpoint. So very good. Well, Justin, uh, very much, uh, enjoyed the conversation and appreciate you taking the time out here today and to, to have it with me and to our audience. Thanks for tuning in to the therapy matters podcast, your one-stop resource for expert insights and advice on everything therapy and rehab. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Take care and have a great day. Thanks for listening to Therapy Matters. Do you like the podcast? Give us a five-star rating, subscribe, and tell all your friends about the show. Want to be a guest or know someone that would be a great guest speaker? Contact me at allison.jones at raintreeinc.com. That's A-L-L-I-S-O-N dot jones at raintreeinc.com. 
Therapy Matters is brought to you by Raintree, Therapy and Rehab's favorite EMR. Raintree is the only all-in-one therapy EMR delivering a complete and seamless end-to-end patient journey from first contact to payment to patient retention. To learn more about Raintree, visit us online at raintreeinc.com.